They used to have all this New York, New Week, New Week Hall or Moremi Hall Week, you know. Or so one of those shows, I think it was the pageant, I can't remember what particular show was happening in the auditorium and I was going to perform. I've been boasting all week, telling my friends, yo, I'm performing. This. You know, all my friends were excited, like, oh, where's this performing? We're going to the show. So I got to the show backstage and they called me up to get on stage. And I got on stage, I was wearing one black t-shirt, my shades, I'm always in my shades. And they played my song. And I was numb, I couldn't even talk, I don't know why. I was just staring at the crowd, and so I was hearing voices, and people were like, sing for us. And then someone was like, Papa, sing song now. So when it hit me and I couldn't talk, and I don't know why I couldn't talk, the next thing, I look at the front row, almost everybody were my classmates, and they were staring at me like this. Should we say you go kill us? I had this friend, he used to be a great singer. So every evening we used to just hang out, chill together, we had people come together, we all just vibe. You know, back then I wasn't more like a, a singer at all. I used to be, I used to dream to be a rapper, so I was more into the rap genre of music. So every now we got and this guy is always singing, he has this very wonderful voice. I would admire him, admire him, you know, like the way a girl would admire a guy. As well, I was admiring the guy's vocals. He used to sing, I had all this attention. People used to come from different parts of the hood and they would come and Tony, Tony, and so this thing. So I look at him one day and I was like, I wanted to be him so bad. Because you know, the attention I was getting was something I liked. I felt like, you know, so I would go into my house, I would lock my room and I would be singing at the top of my voice. I would be shouting, you know, every song that was raining or that was in vogue then, I would get the song, I would mime it, I'd be on top of my voice, my mom would be shouting, oh, Rezzy, I'd be like, oh, that, that, that. You know, so I kept doing that every time, every time I was there for over a period of time. So one day, we had the same gathering again, you know, and they were like, oh, drop your fire song. The guy went go, blah, blah, sang his own, like, oh, Rezzy, give up something. So I sang for a split second, everyone was quiet. The next was like, ah, bro, you got a nice voice. Ah, you said, you sing like this. I'm like, yo, man, that was it for me. Then I started feeling like I could sing, you know. So I had the confidence to want to sing more. So I felt like, at least what I'm doing, people love it. And that's how the whole singing started for me. They used to have all this New York, New Week, New Week Hall or Moremi Hall Week, you know. So one of those shows, I think it was the pageant, I can't remember what particular show was happening in the auditorium and I was going to perform. I've been boasting all week, telling my friends, yo, I'm performing this. You know, all my friends were excited, like, oh, where's this performing? We're going to the show. So I got to the show backstage, and they called me up to get on stage. And I got on stage, I was wearing one black t-shirt, my shades. I'm always in my shades, you know, I don't know. I feel like it helps me to show the way, you know. So I got on stage, and I wanted to perform. I climbed on stage, and I was in my shades on, and they played my song. And I was numb, I couldn't even talk, I don't know why. I was just staring at the crowd. So I was hearing voices, and people were like, sing for us. And then someone was like, Papa, sing song now. So when it hit me and I couldn't talk, and I don't know why I couldn't talk. The next thing, I look at the front row, almost everybody were my classmates, and they were staring at me like this. Should we say you go kill us? <laughs> and they were looking at me like, sing. So one girl, one of my, all girl in front of me like, take off your glasses. And I took off my glasses and that's how I was staring at the crowd and I couldn't sing. And on, I think the MC now said, okay, or is this gonna come back? And I just left this day. I was the talk of that week. Everybody was like, ah, oh, only mouth you get. You're never ready for this music thing, you know? But it was, it was a nice experience because that was maybe summing up my courage, my stage performance. It's a different thing. After that, I kept killing it to date. Um, my first studio session. Okay, I was in uni. I was in uni lag, so I used to always vibe in the class, you know. I had this, I had this group of friends that were my big, you know you have these friends that are like your biggest fans. Whatever you say is just what it is. They just blow it out of proportion. You know, they used to tell me, already, ah, who we'll be, who we'll be, who we'll be Neo, who we'll be, you sing past these people, you know. These are so, so like, so like my personal hype men, you know. So, at a point, I felt like I've been doing this singing in the hostel, we chill after class. I wanted to actually hear her sound like another you know, time. I wanted to hear her sound like I used to hear all them Idris Abdu Karim, Plantation Boys, Osha, I used to hear them, you know. So I wanted to hear her sound like because this, this was me singing. 
it's a different thing you singing and it's a different thing you playing the CD and you're listening to yourself. So, you know, so at that time I had a couple of friends that knew one guy called Dr. Fraps. So Dr. Fraps was like a music producer back then that everybody I knew then was always trying to work with, you know, he was quite big on the ground, you know. So I hooked up with him. He was staying somewhere in Yanokpaja, at your boy area. So went from school to that area, you know. So I got there the first time, you know, he was busy. I saw many artists. I remember he, I remember he, he already started recording bass, bass then. They were all Covenant boys, you know, K-Switch. So they were all from college. So they used to always pack in his house and record. So I went there one, two, three times. They didn't even have my time. You know, like, ah, yo, bro, I'm busy now. So one of the few times I went, they had my time. And we created a song. I can remember that song was Tidal Fever. So when we did the song, he, you know, that was my first experience of them adding effect to the voice, your natural rhythm, just it was sounding so sweet. I was like, is this me? I rushed back to school, played the song for my friends. My friends loved the song. Next day, one of them said, ah, I know this person, you know, like FM, they could get, them, could get you airplay on radio. Then started bumping and, you know, we'll be driving in school from gate to maybe mini auditorium. Then my song comes on on radio. We're like, already, boo -boo, you know. I finished uni. When I finished uni, I had this neighbor. He was into music. I think he, he, he had an artist then called Zidane. You know, his name is, yeah, he had an artist called Zidane. Zidane was like a big deal back then. So that was just me, young, fresh, out of uni. I used to just go to the house and they would, they would play their music, play their music for me. And I'll play my demo. So at so that time, I had like two, three, four songs. I'll play. And they'd be like, these two songs are really nice. And I had the whole youthful touch to my music compared to what they had out there. I was fresh from uni lag. Air swag, complete, everything, you know what I'm saying? So, he listened to my song, he kept listening, you know. I noticed that he was engrossed with my sound and he would love to do something with me, but I don't know, at that time, he was quite tied to Zidane. But I got a call, this must have been like 2009, 2010. And I got a call from him and he called me and he sat me down and he said, Where is he? Yeah, you're a very talented person. I think we can conquer the world together. I'm like, like, I want to work with you. I'm going to invest in you. I'm going to shoot your music videos. I'm going to go to South Africa. I'm going to fly. I was like, yo, I'm going to... I went home and I was like, <sighs> he gave me a contract. I signed. I told my parents, everybody, you know. I said, that time, my parents even know we've been battling if I wanted to do this officially. Like, if this is going to be a career path, I want to choose how I'm going to work. Because like, I tried to work for a while, but... 9 to 5, not my team, you know, so I was, I kept pushing this man. So when he said he was going to sign me, that was like a big dream come through. And, you know, he signed me, it wasn't even up to three months, we're in essay shooting my first single, you know, shot the video, came out. And that's how the whole journey started, you know. Shout out to Ron K, by the way. So that's how everything kick-started. We shot videos and kept releasing music. The world started know who we are, started loving our resi, and boom! That's how we go here. It's never too smooth. And it's never too rough, you know, it's just in between the, the rough times and the good times, the bad times, but everything is what makes who we are, you know. So it's like every other career choosing path. If you want to be a banker, there will always be the up and down. You start from your front reception, it's up the column or your front decks, customer care, next thing. So it's just the same thing, you know. So I started young singer, trying to fight my fears. You know, recording fears, music, fears, just beat all these obstacles to be where we are today. So it's just, it's been a crazy journey, but it's not something I regret. I love every part, I loved every part of it to date, and it's still a journey. We're still on that journey. For upcoming artists that want to follow this career path, like be an artist, you should understand that it's going to take time for you to get people to see what you're all about. Embrace your social media, be about it, don't be shy. Don't worry because the first time you post, you get one like or two like. Keep doing it. From one like, you're gonna get a thousand likes, you're gonna get 10,000 likes. But just know that if people realize that that's what you're all about, that's what they're gonna know you for. And the more they know what you're selling, the more success can come to you. So like I said, if it was a couple of years ago, I would have said something different, but that's the only thing I'm gonna say because I've seen people blow up from Instagram. So if you know you want to be a celebrity or you're a singer, or wake up every morning and sing to the world because the world listen. My name is Orezi. I'm a singer, songwriter, performer from Nigeria, and this is my first. Mm -hmm.